So I am here with Balash Heller, one of the logists, <laughs> and one of my best friends as well, an inspirational man as well. So we are going to speak about love, divorce, mistakes, and responsibility. And I believe this went through behind the scenes what we conversed for many, many hours. So let's try to wrap it in an hour. I know you have so many to share. Uh, so I will let you decide from where you want to begin from. Okay. I always like to be guided regarding questions because I can talk about so many subjects related to this and it's very good for me and helpful if you give me specific questions and then I would be probably much more uh, focused towards your question. Sure. Johan, do you want to begin your question? You have a question for in this matter? Uh, no, not now. Continue. Okay, so may I may I question what is love or define this word that people sometimes don't know what is it or what it refers to? Mm, beautiful question. I think uh, love is the essence of life. This is the a binding power which keeps everything together. This is um, a power which uh, we are all part of. We can call it in different names. God is love. The universe is love. If you think about universe, una, one, verse, soul. So this one soul, which we are all connected to, is happening because of love. My master, Abdul Baha, says that there are four kinds of love. If we understand these four kinds of love, then we would be so much better in loving ourselves, others, and also appreciating life better. So I think this is a very good foundation to define love as uh, my master would share it with all of you. And uh, these four kinds of love are all one because it's not something that we can truly separate. We live according to these four kinds of love. So we cannot just do one type of love, you know, because then that one type wouldn't uh, work. So the first love, which uh, we all gifted since our creation, is that unconditional love, which is coming from the creator, from the source. In fact, that's the foundation of life. Otherwise, you wouldn't exist. Because of love, you exist. The love of God, the creator, created you because out of love. And even in the physical reality, this is how your father and your mother came together out of love. And the result, the outcome, the fruit of your creation is that love. So this unconditional love, which comes from, I would say, there is a vertical and a horizontal a vertical line is the one which is coming from above. If I visualize this, but this is all, all only for visualization purposes, okay? So that the mind can understand. So this divine love is coming from above, from this higher consciousness towards all creation. And this creation, um, which we are part of, it's everyone included. So it's not that, you know, I'm lucky because I am loved and you are not. This is unconditional. 
This is very important to define this. So this love is like just like the rain, you know, the rain is coming and everything gets wet. You know, it's not selective, you know. So the plants are all included in this and the animal kingdom and the mineral kingdom and we humans. So this is an unconditional love which is directed towards the creation from the creator. The second type of love, when it comes from the creation towards the creator. Baha'u'llah, who is uh, the, my, uh, my master, another master of, of, uh, from the Baha'i teachings, who says that, uh, love me that I may love thee. If thou lovest me not, my love in no wise can reach thee. Know this, O servant. Let me repeat this. O son of being, love me that I may love thee. If thou lovest me not, my, not, my love no wise can reach thee. Know this, O servant. This is from the hidden words of Baha'u'llah, where basically God is speaking to humanity. And God says that if you truly want to receive my love, which is unconditional, you first need to love me. Because this is always like a reciprocity when it goes in two directions. Just imagine behind me, you see this curtain, right? and the window if i pull this uh, curtain in there will be no light coming into this room and it would be darkness here that's the purpose of the curtain the sun is shining upon everywhere and everything but if i choose not to get this light into my life i can do this by pulling the curtain in right this is my free will, which God gave us to choose if I want it or I don't. So this, this is the same way with love. This is a choice which I consciously or unconsciously can make so that I receive the love of God. But for that, I need to be open for it. And I need to do my spiritual practices so that I can open up for this love so that I can receive that first love. So this is the reciprocity which I was talking about, right? So my love towards the divine. And in yoga, we call this bhakti yoga, which is the yoga of devotion. That's what for thousands of years we are practicing in all spiritual path we choose in all religions if you go to a mosque you see people are praying if you go to a christian church people are praying that is bhakti yoga if you if you go to um, a buddhist uh, community they are also praying if you go to tibet if you if you think about hinduism and you visit hindu temples it's full of prayers so what are these what is this prayer basically it is the language of love i'm sharing this prayer because through this prayer i'm communion with the divine and that's why in every religion we are encouraged to pray it's a daily obligation to pray so that we can communion with the divine and this is what keeps this love circulating in this vertical alignment, which we talked about the first and the second law, right? Now comes the difficult part. This is the easy part, okay? Now comes the third and the fourth, which is beyond our understanding. So I'm just start uh, talking about the third one. The third one is the horizontal one, which is between creations, between us human beings between humans animals between the plants or the earth and humans and so on between the creation now this love is conditioned okay because why 
because we are imperfect. And if something is imperfect, it cannot be unconditional. But we must strive to make it as unconditional as we have towards the divine and the divine towards ourselves. So if I practice the first and the second kinds of love with that devotion, with that humility, with that compassion, and I'm a true bhakti yogi, a true devotee, then and only then I can truly love my human brothers and sisters. Then I truly can understand what that love truly means. Because until then, we are always loving with very limited uh, perce percentages, okay, or perceptions. Why? Because we are loving from here, the mind. And the mind is always um, doing things with its own limitations. And that's what we see in the world today, that all relationships are so much becoming um, give and take. I love you if you are like this and that, if you do like this and that. So it's like an exchange, like a mat mathematical, ex uh, mathematical um, working equality, but it's not. We must learn to be just as we are loving God unconditionally, we must learn also to love each and one of us with that love. So this is that why we are here in this physical form and body. And that's why we are continuously struggling with it because this is one of the greatest challenge of human consciousness, to love, the way as God loves us and the way we we are learning to love God as well. Because so many times, just think about it, when something terrible happens, then suddenly we question this love towards God. You know, God is punishing us. God is this, God is that. If God would exist, then this would not happen to me. You know, right away, this turns in. And that's the same problematics with our love towards each other and just to shorten it up the fourth love is the love of god towards himself okay this is um, something that um, i cannot explain because it's something beyond my understanding and it's something everyone's understanding this is this higher consciousness love the whole creation is created because of the love of God, the love of God, which created all of us. And just like if you, in my understanding, it's the same concept of how can I love someone else if I cannot love myself first? Remember, we are created in the image of God. So if God is created everything for this love for himself then we as the creation which we are also created to create in the image of god we also first and most we need to learn how to truly love ourselves so that we can truly love another i don't know if that was well <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, it's it's super you know, I didn't expect for, you know, <laughs> but you 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 ex uh, explained it very well. Uh, even though I believe that it, it can be more deeper than that. Yeah, and I have it, a one and a half hours um, YouTube talk about the four kinds of love. If you put oh, my name there, so you wow. can listen. And I think it's about one and a half hours about this topic. I just tried to shorten it up. <laughs> okay. So it's uploaded, you mean, in, on yes, YouTube? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we can edit in this in this link as well, in the sure. comments. So, and it's very important, sorry, just to add something important. These four kinds of love don't, it's just the mind which likes to, you know, put things in boxes and separate it. But this is one, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is not that, you know, I believe 
I don't believe in God so that I don't have this one and to know. Because you exist, it's part of who you are on a cellular level, on a macro and micro level. You know, mm -hmm. the universe is, is you. It's part of within you. That's why I always say this uh, quote from Rumi, that we are not one drop of the ocean, but we are this ocean in that one drop. So the mm -hmm. universe is with, within you and that love, which binds everything together, is you. Just think about your your anatomy, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, what, what, how, how magical is that out of two cells, you become an embryo and then you become a human being throughout this nine months. What is that? How powerful know, is that? If, if, if I, example number four, love is the reason, right? And, and love yeah. is the cause and uh, the reason is yes, as well. Yeah, here, yeah, uh, Hoi Poi said, Love is why, love is how, love is because, love is everything. And eventually it, 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 it makes me envision an artist. How can an artist uh, make an art without loving the art itself? So whenever an, an artist creates something, whoever it is, it can be some kind of other, other uh, faculty. Eventually, whatever we create, because we love it. So that is the, I believe that is the logic behind love is the reason, because eventually, if we are created, someone must have loved us, right? Or is loving us. And also about uh, point three, you say the horizontal, the conditioning, love. The, the between creator the, the creations uh which is inevitable that we create distinction and separation uh how can you not separate your wife from your friend uh if i if i ask my wife uh, who should i love most you or my colleague uh, so is it good that we create distinction? We create a conscious conditioning to love actually who should we love most? Uh, yeah, please. It's just so funny, you know, when you ask this question, ask the question, who is asking this question? Who is asking this question? Yes. It's so easy to define who is asking this question because the, the one who asks this question already wanting to separate. Okay. So the answer is the mind because you already compare. You already, who is most important, less important. In the spiritual reality, we don't have separation. We don't have less or more. Uh, light and darkness good or bad this is all the conceptualization of the mind so why should i love someone less and more or this and that why do i need to choose the my my main concept is that the mind always wants this you know always want to label always want to conceptualize always want to put things in boxes always want you to justify things which is fine this is the mind works but from a higher consciousness there is love and that's it less love like hatred is part of this love too you know i can only hate someone if i have feelings towards that person so this scale is just part of our love everything is part of it everything is included in it so I love my wife, I love my girlfriend, I love my friends. These are different types of love, but the most important question is not how I love this better or that better, but I would rather say how fruitful is that love? How pure is that love? How conscious is that love? 
the quality of this love, you know, because obviously the level of how you love your children and the level of how you love your father, your parents, your wife, it's different because there, there is different roles we are giving with that love to really manifest it uh, towards different personalities and different um, roles we are fulfilling in this life. But truly, the main question is, which is also coming from Rumi, it's not that we need to learn how to love, but we must learn all the barriers which keeps us away from love. You see? So this is very important, I think, to change the question regarding, okay, how can I really and truly love with with its purest form i think johan is leaving now so thank you very much johan for coming so we have we have different roles right so the difference the self i mean create. sorry we have on the mental level, on the physical level, we have different roles. Yes. And eventually when, when we decide to take care of the family, it's, it's something that we decide to give this responsibility, give our, uh, our priority. So the priority itself is like, a distinction between the the bottom and the top. So that is the top is the priority and the bottom is the low priority. So the top always are the people who are close and the bottom are the people who are not close. What do you mean uh, then? Not close and close. So uh, let's say who who is the most uh, prior priority in our life? So you begin from the, the closest person and expand towards the the further person in your life. Mm -hmm. It depends on the situation, of course, because if you are walking down the street and you see someone who needs help, of course, that becomes the priority. Uh, but if you can or have the time to think about it well, and you you think uh, is it can I can I speak to Balash today or or I need to stay with my wife because she needs help with the kid. So uh, of course we need to define how are we going to use this responsibility because I cannot speak always to Balash or I cannot speak always to my wife we need to find a balance between the people, the create the creations. So the balance is difficult to be achieved because the balance is not the same. You cannot expect uh, to speak with someone more than someone who eventually you are full responsible of like your 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 son, your 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 daughter, you cannot disregard them and do any uh, something else because that is lack of love to them. And when you decided to take this responsibility, we need to be conscious that we 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 kind of signed this spiritual responsibility, the sacrifice that even though I want to do this. I truly want to help you, but I decided to take care of this family. So how I... can we how can we uh, not dis distinguish between the creations? Because the, we we cannot take care of the whole world. Every cluster has his own responsibility. There is the family, you know, so please. 
let me tell you something uh, which I think helps me to live my life according to that. What I what I realized throughout these years, for decades, is that um, it's not that we need to learn to love, but to be loved. And if I understand this very well, that I don't need to love more, because it's not like doing more, you know, but being more. That's why we are called not human doings, but human beings, because we need to learn how to be more. And there are so many ways to love. It's not just, your love is not just by how much time you spend with someone, how much time you communicate with someone. I can love you without you really noticing it, right? I don't need to talk to you every day to share my love to you. I can send you my prayers. I can send you, uh, if we talk about Reiki energy healing, I can send you Reiki every day if you are sick so that I'm I'm in part of your healing without you noticing it, where it's coming from. But I'm sharing my love. Even when I think of you, I'm sharing my love. So, yes, we are limited with our time because we all are gifted by God with these 24 hours a day. And we have a free will and choice to prioritize how we spend these 24 hours a day. And it's differing from person to person. What is the highest priority with, with my time to spend on? There are people, monks, who gave up their material life and they devote purely on God and they are praying and meditating and devoting their life towards God. And there are no other priorities in their life, you know. And there are people who do the opposite. So this is an individual choice which we are living our life and uh, it's hard to tell you know this is the right thing to do and this is the wrong thing to do because there's no right and wrong in the spiritual reality this is life which you were given and you do what you choose to do with that the question is that truly with every breath you take with every thoughts you make with every actions you make, how much love is fused that with? How much it goes through that it's not just affecting your smallest circles, but it affects the whole world. You know, Mother Teresa was really going to India to helping the children and look how big shift and change she brought to the world just by she devoting her life to this small little cause which became huge. Or think about Gandhi, you know, who was a lawyer who went to South Africa and was helping the minorities. And then she, I mean, he went back to India and people helped with his help with his help made the whole continent india it's it's like a continent you know the indian continent with the biggest population as a country to become independent so how much um, we are making uh, differences to the world is not really up to us as much as we think and when you think that you are only, you know, I can only love my children and my and my wife because I don't have more to give, that's everything. Because you, with that, actually healing the world. That love 
always comes from the individual up to the collective. Every single love we make is coming from the source, which is the soul within myself, towards the divine, which is the, the Paratman, which is all-inclusive, you know? So how small, how big that love, it has an effect on someone. So prioritizing, it's your choice. And whatever you choose, it's okay. It's, it's your life. And nobody has the right to judge that for you. And nobody should point fingers of why you do this and that. You feel deep down what is for you important. Again, going back to my previous thought is the quality of love, which is important. The quality of how much love you spend with your children, with your partner, with your whoever you are with. Do they feel that love? Because if they do, then you're changing the world. And if you are only focusing on your wife, it affects your children. And it affects your wife's circles. It affects the whole world. I don't know if it makes sense, but we are all interconnected and we are all mirroring each other and we are all inclusive. Whenever we separate, this is the death of love. I mean, that could be also grace of God, by the way, when we talk about death. It's a whole different topic. We are mortal because we need to learn what is important and what is not important. And love is not mortal because it's divine. Therefore, it's everlasting. That's why it's important to understand the whole process of the physical and the whole process of the spiritual reality, that it's all interconnected and fused together while we are in this human body. But basically, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. We need to learn in this human life, which is very short-lived, how we can eternally love. Wow. Wow. So the quality of love. When I think about divorce. Yes. Where is this quality? Beautiful. It's like when we talk about divorce, if if I would all say this sentence or uh, this word divorce. 99% of people think about uh, something negative, right? Something bad, especially in the Christian um, tradition, you know, where in many countries, even in Malta, just recently, I don't know how many years ago, they allowed divorce before it was not possible. Divorce is just as natural as death. Divorce is a death of a relationship which is not functioning. There is nothing wrong with divorce. Just as there is nothing wrong with marriage. Just as there is nothing wrong with, uh, with a storm, you know. If I say storm, or if I say that... Uh, uh, clouded and dark weather when I wake up in the morning I say oh what a shitty day is it a shitty day really I think it's magical you know and I go into the forest and I run in the rain because it's so amazing and powerful or go and, and jump and swim in the sea because it's magical we have a conceptualization that when the sun is up then it's nice weather. When it's, when it's cloudy, it's bad weather, you know? Happy marriage. And then when, when there's a divorce, then it's bad. There's nothing wrong with that. There is conscious uncoupling, which is ended 
with divorce. Why? Because the two partners realizes that they are not meant to be together any longer. You get married, you are happy, and you're growing together, and you are changing. And you are either getting closer and closer like a triangle towards God, towards this oneness, and you are helping each other to expand and grow together, or there's a point when you are just drifting away because you are growing towards different directions in life, which is fine, which is beautiful. And with love, you recognize that. And with that love, because you appreciate that the other person is struggling and suffering in this relationship and it's not helping her and it's not helping you, you decide that I'm starting the conscious uncoupling and then starting a new chapter in your life, just like human development goes through different stages, you know? So oh, I ask this question because I believe every person has a kind of thought. Uh, even though we may share it, still we can work in a different way uh, without the necessity to hold each other's hands. Uh, the point is this, how a relationship becomes, because if I think about a relationship that is 20 years of, of, of uh, daily marriage, a partnership, that eventually grew into a family. And then after 20 years, you say, oh, this is not functioning anymore. How, how is it possible that eventually this happens? It's um, very simple. How is it possible that I was a professional gymnast, so I always bring my experience into life. How it's possible that um, at age seven, when I started, I had a different level of gymnastics that at age 12 or 13, when I became the first time national champion, and then at 15 or 16, when I became part of the national team, and, and then when you reach your peak, you know? And then eventually at 21, I terminated my career and I just, you know, left 13 years of, of marriage and I divorced from gymnastics, you know, which was a very painful experience for me, for sure, because the love of my life, the first big love of my life was gymnastics and the divorce was very painful. Why did I stop? I could have continued for many years, but something within myself said that it's enough. I cannot grow further any longer. So when we get to the point that why something is not functioning, let it be a marriage, let it be whatever it is, it simply means that the quality of your existence is not supported anymore. What do I mean by that? What is our purpose? We need to understand. We are, as I told you, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. So if I am the soul, which is here to expand, to grow, to reach a higher level of consciousness with, with day by day as we are living the life, this is my understanding about this existence, then you must also explore this in every aspect of your life, including in your relationship. And if you cannot do that any longer, which can come to a point in your life, that you cannot, you are, you are just going against the wall each time. You try, you keep on trying, you try to work it out, you do therapy, you do uh, counseling, you do a lot of... Uh, 
self-work, a couple of work, but still it's not functioning. It simply means that you must choose another path. And then once you close it down and you start a new chapter with a new partner, you realize what was the mistake or I don't believe in mistakes when this is the topic which we also mentioned. I don't believe in mistakes. I believe that we have we we are here to explore and experience life. And through this experience which we are going through, we have an outcome. And this outcome is never a mistake. You know? It's never a mistake because it's only a I would say only a mistake if if I'm not uh, learning out of it that's a mistake but everything which we go through a failure which we call it a mistake it's an opportunity for me to grow to expand so inclusively relationship is the same so in what stage of your marriage it happens when in the first two years or after five years or 15 years or 20 years it's up to the two individuals who are growing together. It's not enough in a relationship that one person is growing and the other one is, you know, pulling with her. Keep on pulling. Because after a while, it becomes exhausting. It's an energetic exhaustion which is happening in a relationship. It can be maintained for a while, but then essentially the whole universe, the cosmos, works with energetic balances. So after a while, this needs to manifest in either, let's say, um, someone is um, going outside of a relationship and looking for lovers, or it can go into a sickness that the person cannot take it, and there are many other ways, but the most truthful way is in a relationship when there is a struggle, when there's a challenge, when there is this, let's say, to, uh, duration of challenge in, in any relationship there is, you either, you either grow closer to each other through these challenges or you are actually realizing that you must separate. And these two is both great because either way it helps you guys both of both sides to expand and to learn now if you're repeating the same mistakes and you're stuck in a relationship because you are uh, afraid you are fearful and you stay and and keep yourself into a relationship because of the kids, because of financial insecurity, because of this and this and that. Now this is causing more suffering in the world, more suffering in the environment because those two individuals cannot progress. They are stuck. You know, you are keep on hitting the same thing, and then because of you suffering your circumstances, your whole circle is suffering, and then you cannot achieve basically the purpose of your existence, which is expansion, which is about growth. Okay. So let's let's put this into uh, subjective. So let's say right now the children are crying and my wife Chantel is like exhausted. And she calls me and she tells me, you know, this has to stop. This is too much for me. No more calls. No more whatever you are doing because I need your help. So my mind tells me this is my responsibility. This is eventually I need to support my wife. And since we agreed to have a family, that is my duty to do this. Right? If not, I am not loving thee. The point is this. How can we progress if we get stuck to that? Just that. Still we can progress through that. But 
why I am here with you then? What is the point? Maybe because you can give me something that she cannot right now. A realization that she maybe needed from me, from you. <laughs> Which later on I can give to her and to our children. So what I am doing here is also for them. But you we, answered your question. <laughs> the, the, the point is that we get stuck to the present moment and we don't go further into the future and we say, I just need you now. Whatever you are doing for the future, let it go. You need to invest in the present and not in the future. So what shall I do in that case? Because if I decide to continue this, I may risk a divorce. So this is a fundamental question you're asking. And that's why it's so important that we are very conscious in our relationship. The key in everything is consciousness, right? And in order to become conscious, for example, in a relationship, which is based on two people, not one, we always need to find the balance which both sides is equally agreeing on it, you know? Because when we talk about marriage, we don't talk about Alex and Chantel, we're talking about an, a new identity, which is called us. Most of the relationship uh, and divorce happens because the us is, is not nourished. It's not nurtured and it's not, uh, the needs of the us is not met and not fulfilled to function properly. So the basics of every relationship is always consultation understanding the needs of each other, understanding what is important for you, what is important for her, and helping to um, adjust each other's timing and needs and desires and all these things. We accompany each other in fulfilling this um, balanced life within the individual and within the collective. This is a fluid adjustment, continuous fluid adjustment towards each other. So if I understand what the needs of Shanta and if I understand what's the needs of Alex, a happy marriage can work if I respect those needs and we have an agreement between each other that Alex, I need to nourish my soul and expand and uh, go deep. And I, need, for example, giving my example, I need me time. Okay. I need to get lost in the forest for one hour at least a day. If I don't have that, I'm not the same person. And because my partner knows that, she is sending me out with a greatest pleasure. If she is frustrated about it, it simply means that she is not loving me enough and understanding me enough to know what my needs are and, and that they are not mad. So you see, the, the whole process of uh, growing together is understanding each other's needs and to have compassion towards each other. But it has to be, uh, in a way, balanced energetically it's because if it's only one-sided then one person is always taking 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 mm -hmm. so you need to find you too it's not someone outside who tells you you know this is the right balance you know it's something that you too need to say that okay let's sit down what are your needs what is for you how can i love you more this is a great exercise to be practical you sit down face to face each other. Uh, Shanta, my love, please tell me 
How can I be a better partner for you? What do you feel that I'm I'm lacking of? I'm not uh, giving enough support. But then we turn and the same thing from the other side. And if we ch uh, we understand each other and we are putting into practice to accommodate the other person's needs, that relationship is going to thrive because your happiness is her happiness and her happiness is your happiness and your love languages they made a lot of books about it the love languages are different for men and for women you know if i wash the dishes this is the greatest love for a woman you know if i clean up it's it's the greatest love if i i don't know take out the kids change the nappy uh, why why the baby is crying you run there and take care of it that's the greatest uh, father role which we can do the same mm. thing with a with a woman we we need to be understood that's what my basic statement here yeah so the time uh, of course consultation is very very important uh, and I believe that in, in the morning is essential that when we wake up, we have a, a time frame that we can consult and prepare the day. You know, today I, I need to meet Palash at four. Is, is it the law okay? Because this is important that an agreement can change. So, because it's time dependent. So let's say we wake up at six and we agree that, okay, you know, I have a call with Balash and we can uh, eventually, uh, Chantel can take care of the kids and I can speak. But then three comes and she tell me, you know, today is, it was a really, really bad day at work. I am exhausted. I cannot keep the children now. So I think I'm going to break the agreement. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's why we need the agreement. The, 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 the point is this. Once we agree, shall we change the agreement? Or ha how, how is this going to happen? How do we feel or should we feel about breaking agreement? What is our responsibility on keeping, uh, especially if, if I if I scheduled with someone else, it's not just about me going to the forest, it's about us going to the forest. Sure. So if I don't go to the forest, may not even Balat can go because we, we decided together to go. So what I what I truly believe it's very important is um, first to understand that we are imperfect yeah this is the starting point that i'm not perfect i make mistakes and you are not perfect and you make mistakes therefore therefore we need to learn to be patient we need to appreciate if someone is making a mistakes and then you know realizes and say i'm very sorry and so on so the intention is very important the other thing is about trial and error. This is very important too, that we agree on something, we put it into practice, see how it works, try it out, see what mistakes, what's not working, what's working, and then we are adjusting to it. That's why I'm saying that life is not uh, black and white. There are things where I think it's important to be black and white, like truthfulness. But there are and the spiritual virtues, but there are things where we are going through a process of learning. A lifetime is not enough to learn about who I am. And we have not even talked about understanding my partner, the other person, or my children. So we have difficulties to understand myself because I'm changing every single day, you know? So my partner is changing every single day. So there is a trial error, which means that we are keep on working on it, working it out. The, the, the main uh, thing which I really believe it's very important is uh, 
problem solving, you know, how much we can uh, basically solve problems. And I give you um, five, five A's if you can write it down, which would help, I think, many people, which I wrote out to everyone, which is important to have. And remember, it's easy, five A's. Attention, acceptance, appreciation, affection, and allowing, yeah? What is attention? Attention is that I am present with you, you know? I put my energy towards you. Acceptance is accepting what is, you know? Not what I think, not what I want to believe, because that creates a lot of tension, because I, in a way, projecting so many things into that poor person in front of me, which has nothing to do with her. I'm projecting my shortcomings into her many times. So acceptance is that my shortcomings acceptance her shortcomings appreciation i appreciate that you are part of my life i appreciate that we have two beautiful children i appreciate that uh, i can wake up with you and go to sleep together with you i appreciate because you exist and you don't need to Prove it. You don't need to uh, cut your hair. You don't need to uh, make lots of money. You don't need to look great. You don't need anything. You just, I love you and I appreciate you because of who you are, the beautiful soul. Uh, affection. Affection is what? That I feel a sort of um, attraction, not just the physical attraction, but as I mentioned to you, your, my attraction to your soul, to the light within yourself, which I connected deep down with you because the physical form shades away. So people who fall in, fall in love in the outside, that is short-lived. If I fall in love with the inside of the person, that's what lasts forever. And allowing, the last A, is allowing to make mistakes, to screw things up to, um, I don't know, you know, everything, allow things to happen. Many times we block what comes into our life because we want to keep the control, you know? And I tell you also the seven C's, which is very important in a relationship. One, which we talked about, communication, right? Communication. If we don't know how to communicate with each other, I tell you from day one, guys, this is not going to work. If you don't know how to communicate in a loving way, then you cannot do the next C, which is conflict resolution, which is making sure that no matter what the conflict between us caused by whatever, we can resolve it. Why? Because we love one another. And our foundation is the strongest, which is that love. Three is culture. Okay. And here, when I say the culture, I'm not just talking about, you know, I am Muslim, I'm Christian, um, I am Hungarian, you are Maltese. The culture of understanding of who we are. The culture of we are spiritual beings on this human uh, on this human journey the culture of loving the culture of living a spiritual life this is what i mean culture more than just culture of different nationalities because the culture of being uh, spiritually awakened requires a culture of spiritual practices which if we do then it doesn't matter what nationality and what uh, culture you're from because it's beyond, right? When we understand we are one, it's the culture of oneness. This is what I want to say. The next one is commitment. So if I'm not committed to a relationship, if I keep my doors open and if something doesn't work, I just, you know, shut the door and I and look for another one. This is not right. 
So we talked about divorce. I'm not talking if something doesn't work, then you know you get pissed off and you get out and you look for for a lover just to fix your pain. No. In the Baha'i teachings, there is a year of patience, which means that for one year, when you decide that your relationship doesn't work, for one year, you don't go into another relationship. You are working on yourself and on your on your marriage or on your relationship. Even if the other person does not want to, you keep that one year of patience so that you can grow, you can learn, and you go till the end until you decide that now I cannot put it further. I cannot hold on longer. So give yourself this commitment into your relationship. When you're in a relationship, that's the one who you focus. I'm talking obviously about monogamy because that's the topic which we I, I talk about. There is other ways, polygamy, polyamory, but I'm talking about monogamy. Commitment is to a monogamic relationship is already a big trouble for many people. And um, what is the next one was caring, caring and sex, you know, it's it comes together, caring spiritually, mentally, physically, caring means that I'm taking care of the other person. So she feels that she is taken care of, just like a baby, you know, we can always trust that I have someone who I can always um, taken care of by and obviously the sexual part is the physical part how actually it's not just a sexual physical but sexual energetic and spiritual way as well um, the next one the sixth one is contract and this is what we talked about we need to make agreements contracts that we create our own laws of the universe within our relationship. Contract is that, you know, please help me. I'm very bad with this and this and that. What would work for you that I can be a better service in our relationship? And we use, we make contracts on this is the right way. And the last one is the character. The character is something which we must also learn to adjust according to what we need to um, change in order that the other person can appreciate that and other person can uh, connect me in a way. So if I'm angry, because that's my character, let's say, I'm an angry person because my father was angry. And because my father was angry, this is what I learned, right? So whenever you get into a relationship, guess what, this character will come out very soon. Now, we can say about my character, I'm sorry, my partner, but this is how I am. Or I can say that thank you so much for raising awareness that I'm very angry and anxious very easily. And I need to go for therapy to take care of this because this is not acceptable in this relationship because it's a poison so the character is something which is changeable don't accept if this character is poisonous in a relationship if it's important for you to make this relationship work and i believe everyone wants to um, make it work then you must learn to deal with it if you don't you can change relationship you can divorce five times you can divorce as many as you want you're not gonna make it the next one because the same character will ruin the next relationship wow okay i write i, I wrote so many things but i want to focus just on two okay and you said that we need to dedicate time to ask our partners how can i love you more mm -hmm. and uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, my partner telling me what are you ready to let go of 
Mm, beautiful. And then my mind is telling me, do you, I really need to let go of this or can I shift? It? So let's say instead of going to the forest in the morning, I go to the, in the evening or maybe even the night. Because if the forest is important for me, if I accepted this as part of my life today, my well-being, why should I let it go? And it, it sometimes our partners need a, 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 a kind of proof that you really love me. If you really love me, you let go yourself. Let go even your well-being. And uh, most people may do it temporarily. So uh, eventually, uh, this is something that it's important to focus on. And also about uh, allowing ourselves to fail. This is this is uh, what I want to focus also on, uh, allowing ourselves to fail. So that let's So uh, eventually, if we allow ourselves to fail, are we loving? as we should because you know i am an imperfect mm -hmm. being and i it's okay for me to fail it's okay to to think about more about myself today you know and fail because fa what is the fail a fail is like you know i told my wife we are we are staying till 5 and it's 14 so it's a fail. <laughs> um, and she's, she's knocking on my door. So who is right? Shall we, sh shall we allow this to continue? Is it okay that I failed to keep my time frame? The question is again, is it okay for you? Is it okay for your relationship? Is it okay for what uh, situation you are in? It's all very individual question. I don't believe I told you in failure. Remember, allowing to fail, it's, uh, it's not something I agree with. Because when you allow a relationship to fall apart, it's not a failure. Allowing a relationship to depart, it simply means that you allow that what doesn't work, you... Uh, allow to release to the universe. Let's put it this way. Mm. And then something new will reborn into that. Every single day is a rebirthing experience, in my opinion. And uh, just because uh, something is not working according to your needs or her needs, is not a failure. It's just how you two together are capable of managing to balance this individual need and couple need and collective need together. It's all something that there is no um, this way or that way. If I say what is right, what is not right, it's, it's nonsense. You know, this question is, unfortunately, in my opinion, it's something that you two know the best. I don't know. I know in my relationship what is right, and I hope that my partner also know. And then we come together, we consult, and we discuss at the right timing when it's both sides is can allow this to happen. We need to be present in order that consultation can happen. First and most, both sides needs to agree that I am ready to consult. Hmm. You know. And second, it must do it with an understanding of love. 
if I shut the door on the other person and I scream that I need to talk to you, do I really want to consult with you? Not really, right? So consultation only can happen if we can find that mutual vibration, which allows us that we can truly understand each other. And the other way, uh, other thing you said that uh, proving that I love you, you know, this is a, a human game. We we like to do that, but true love is when you don't need to prove anything. It's just there. When you need to, when you need to prove, you know, prove me, you know, cut your hair short, then I love you. Then something much bigger behind that, you know, it's not nev never the the issue is not there. It's somewhere much deeper than the outside things. You know, when I need to prove, I don't need to prove anything. It's either there or it's not there, and you feel it. And if you if you don't feel it, then it's, it's just not there, you know? How do I, this is a question, how do I know she is the right one? He is the right one. And then I ask around my friends, do you think she's a good girl? Do you? It doesn't work like that. It's a soul to soul connection between two beautiful souls. And that is what I believe it's like a, a relationship is about dancing, on the same rhythm mm. because I can have my rhythm and she can have her rhythm and try to dance together. Mm. It's very difficult, right? It's, there is no cohesion between you two. Mm. Then it's, it's, it, it's, it's not working. It's like a no. dance on mm -hmm. a, on any dance you choose, you are dancing on the same rhythm. Next time, I would love to, to go deeper about the proof. And sure. uh, if, if it's really necessary for me as a partner to prove you as my partner, that I am your partner, I am in collaboration with you, I am, I, I am in love with you. When you, when you have that, well, you feel that way because I th I think that um, that's the question really. Uh, it's a lack of um, trust, lack of commitment in the relationship, and lack of trust. And once there is a lack of trust, it was because of something. It's not just something right away, unless that person is taking that lack of trust from his childhood. We talked about this, Alex. Mm. We are bringing so many um, distortions from our childhood because that's what we learned from our parents. Mm. You know, if your parents' relationship was lack of trust, guess what? You are moving into a relationship continuously. You want approvals that this person is really loves me. You see why? Because you are raised up with this lack of trust about marriage, about relationship. Mm. Well, next time. So thank you very much for being here. I am grateful you. for your, eventually I, I believe you did your homework here. It was very beautiful and clean, organized. I just wanted these five A seven Cs because this is very practical. I, I I can talk spiritually very long, but I just thought these uh, five A seven Cs. I really like them, so I just wanted to share with with um, you guys so that you can implement it in your relationships. Beautiful, and uh, please share me your link that you said about the four kinds of love, so I can put it in the comment section and eventually people can also see that to follow it sure. later okay and i also re recommend to read the original writings of abdul baha i can also share that link so yes. that you can also learn because i'm i'm also learned this from the source you know so yeah. it's always the best uh, to learn it from the source and then 
obviously maybe you you have some something to add to this yeah thank you very much you're welcome and god bless you all wish you well